Hey guys, it's Size. Last night on the Dragonflight Beta Maintenance, Blizzard went ahead and put through quite a few class changes, specifically for Shadow Priest. So we're just going to have a quick look at the Wowhead article, and then when we're done reading, we'll jump onto the Dragonflight Beta and experience these changes firsthand. So Shadow Crash applies Vampiric Touch to eight targets up from four. This means that in Mythic Plus scenarios and even some of the raid encounters where there's quite a few adds. You're saving yourself these GCDs, you can get straight into the burst AoE damage that you want to see from maybe Mindseer. Instead of having to worry about if you've pulled more than 4 targets, you're going to have to re-dot those extra targets. This just means that you can get straight into the Mindseer, straight into the damage, and there's not as much setup required. Idle of Nazoth no longer triggers from Devouring Plague damage. The usual, Blizzard want to cut it down so that you're not stacking up Echo and Void as often as you were. Damage dealt by Shadow Wave Pain and Vampiric Touch has a 30% chance to apply a Quinn Void up from 20. You'll see why they've done this in a minute. They want it to stack higher because they've nerfed it by 60%. Which is a significant nerf, but it was top of your damage on any form of cleave content. And they've actually now fixed it from disappearing. So in the past, if an enemy that died with Echo and Void, you'd waste the stacks. As long as it exploded you were fine but if it died before the stacks got to explode they were wasted stacks so now they've changed it so that enemies that die with echo and void trigger the remaining stacks immediately really nice change but echo and void now deals reduced damage beyond five targets it was expected it's i would say it's 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 needed when echo and void i know it's a capstone talent but when it was top of your damage on any form of content that had three to four targets, the spec just doesn't look right. You know, you've still got all your shadowy apparitions, shadow crash, devour and plague that should be up there. But instead, all you were seeing were Echo and Void and it was 30-40% of your damage. So, shadowy apparitions can no longer be seen by allies in dungeons and raids. It's just a hardware thing that Blizzard are doing so that people won't lag out as much. Otherwise you'll get a situation like back in Mr. Pandaria where your entire Raider screen was filled with these black shadowy apparitions and you couldn't see nothing and it was really hard hitting on performance. Doesn't affect the class though at all. Mindseer now has a 50% chance per tick to create shadowy apparitions that float towards all targets affected by your Vampiric Touch for shadow damage. So they've just enabled Mindseer to proc shadowy apparitions wasn't a thing in the past but i get the feeling that they want shadowy apparitions to be a bigger part of shadow priest damage than it is i won't complain about it it does mean that you might be more likely to still spec into auspicious spirits versus tormented spirits we'll have a little look at that on the beta but at the minute with auspicious spirit you're gaining 115 percent increased damage on your shadowy apparitions it's a big chunk of damage. But going forward, Idle of Yogg-Saron, they've completely changed how things from beyond behaves. So each time you spawn a set of shadowy apparitions, you gain a stack of Idle of Yogg-Saron. At 25 stacks, you summon a thing from beyond that serves you for 20 seconds. The thing from beyond blasts enemies for shadow damage and deals 30% of that damage to all enemies within 10 yards, reduced beyond five targets. So in my first opinions of my Shadow Priest video that I made a while back, I did say it would be nice for the thing from beyond to cleave. Even if it is 30% damage in 10 yards. In Keystones, it was really lacklustre. You would use it and it would proc between packs and then it would do no AOE damage and it felt wasted. So to have this now doing any form of cleave, I'm really happy about. Even if it is reduced beyond 5 targets, that's still a decent chunk of cleave damage for the 20 seconds that you have it up for. And it also means, unlike in my last video, I was saying that you would only have one thing from beyond in an 8 minute encounter. You will now have this up a lot more often in raiding encounters, which I'm really excited for. I'm excited to see in the raid test and how much damage it does. But I'll let you guys know that in a different video. So things from beyond void spank damage reduced by 60%. I think that's fine. That goes in line with the fact that it now cleaves, right? Void Spike is now affected by Shadow Weaving. Okay, so your pet's ability is now affected by Shadow Weaving. Is what it is. And Void Spike's cast time increased by 2-2 two, two seconds. 
it was one and a half. Okay, so Blizzard must want to tune Think From Beyond to do pretty significant damage if they're increasing the cast time and reducing its damage by 60% but allowing it to cleave. But with that, that's all the changes. What we'll do is we'll hop onto the Dragonflight beta and I will put in some clips for you showing how the new interactions work. Back in a moment. So in this clip, we're looking at the Mindseer into Shadowy Apparitions. So it's hard to tell because I haven't actually seen any of the animations coming on the screen. But yet when I look in the damage meter, we do actually have Shadowy Apparition damage. But it's hard to tell if it's coming from the Mindseer or coming from the dots. So when I was channeling Mindseer, what I will say is I didn't see any apparitions coming forward. And it is a 50% chance, right, per tick. So you could argue it's massively influenced by RNG. But you've got to bear in mind, the higher targets that you have that you're casting Mindseer into, the increased chance that you're going to get to spawn these apparitions. So it's going to scale exponentially, depending on how many targets you are actually hitting. So look forward to that on Mythic Plus. It's going to be a decent chunk of probably burst damage in the form of Mindseer into apparitions. But again, tuning's going to happen. Maybe we'll get Mythic Plus on the weekend and I'll get to test it for you guys. But next we're going to be looking at the thing from beyond. So one of the things that I noticed right off the bat is how quickly at the idle stacks. So of course the more targets you have the more apparitions you're going to have going into a target and you're going to gain more stacks quicker. But it did come around pretty quickly um obviously providing that you're using devour and plague or even mind searing to get those shadow apparitions in now i did try different kinds of ways of getting it but here we are so he spawns he casts every two seconds he's not affected by any form of actual stats from yourself so every two seconds he casts his void spike and it's cleaving onto the three targets you can see it in the top left where it's hitting and then you'll see it in the damage meter in just a second as well when I hover over it. So the overall damage that he did on three targets, considering it was a short burst of damage, was decent. You know, he's quite up there. He was 4th, 130k on the single target. But then the cleave was a little bit lower, down at 60, 70k. So he cast 12 times uh, overall for throughout those 20 seconds. So 12 casts. And then I've got another clip here where I build up towards the thing from beyond and then I actually give him power infusion. I wanted to see the difference in the cast and how quickly he casts. So you can see the cast bar now, he's casting every second, maybe less than every second. But now that you've got twins as well and you know, you're know you gaining haste as well, whilst it might not be the best thing to put it on your pet versus another player, you can't argue with the cast. So the cast went from 12 to 17. He did about 40k more damage than what he did without PI. And I'm just thinking, so you won't have PI up every single time that you have a thing from beyond up now. But if you're doing solo content, you know, if you're doing dungeons and low key stones and you don't really want to give PI to another player, you could give it to your pet. It could be griefing, who knows? But it's fun. It's a fun part of the priest gameplay now. So you have that to look forward to. Overall, the changes are pretty decent. I can't complain. Obviously, there were some nerfs with Echo and Void, and now it's going to be arguable whether you take it or not. But it wasn't doing bad damage on the testing I just did. Again, I'm going to have to wait for the next set of Mythic Plus testing to go live. But as soon as that does, I'll be in those dungeons testing out these things for you guys. But with that, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you feel like the video was decent and educational. And look in the description below to follow my Twitch channel. I do go live most nights with Shadow Priest content, Warlock content and Windwalker content on live or beta. But with that team, thank you for watching and take care.